Hello and welcome to another Nico Media tutorial. Uh, recently I surfed in the internet and I uh, found this picture here. And I wanted to recreate something like this, not exactly this, but something like this. And I, I thought and thought and thought and yeah, and I found a way which is really, I think it's a nice way and it, it makes fun to do this. Uh, with what I came out is uh, this, wait just a second, oops, that's this here, and yeah, and this can be totally different, so uh, let's hide this here, okay, and yeah, what I did is I animated a an noise, and with an and uh, rendered out a black and white picture of it, so uh, just some single pictures, so frame by frame, let's say. And then for each picture of this uh, noise, of this animated noise, I made a spline out of it. Then I <laughs> I distributed the splines on, a, on another spline, and and, and, uh, and and you will see. And we will use uh, a lot in here. We will use Expresso. We will use uh, Coffee Script. But don't worry, that the Coffee Script. We don't have to know nothing about uh, scripting. We just have to be able to copy and paste. So, <laughs> okay. So let's start. It will be a nice tutorial. I think. I think you like it. Okay. We start with making an. an uh, a texture, so an animated texture. What I want, I want to make a, a spline out of a black and white picture with the vectorizer we have here on board. Okay, first what I want is uh, I need a plane, or you can take a plane, a, a disk, whatever you want. It will be then, uh, let's see, if you have take here a, a uh, a circle, or uh, a disc, you will get a round shape here instead of, of this quarter here. Or you can take a triangle of a shape, or a hexagon, or whatever you want. So I try to do it with, with a plane. I don't need any subdivisions here. And put it to plus X. No, of course. Plus set. Okay. Then I take a camera and I want the camera exactly here now by now. What is exactly in the middle? Here, null, null. And it is what I need is a one by one, one to one uh, resolution. So I go to the output here. And make here, let's say, thousand by thousand. Okay. Oops, I need it here. In the low version, not on the. Don't need octane here. So. We have here now a thousand by thousand. Okay. And now I go with the set axis with the camera. Something like here, so that it fits in this quarter here. Next thing, I need a texture. So I go to my texture manager, double click in it and double click on the texture and just go to the color channel. In the color channel I want a noise. And this noise I go with the contrast totally to 100%. Now I drag this on my plane and I get something like this. You see it just checked edges but this we can get rid of and go to editor in the texture deck and go here to about 1048 and we have nice. So everything you see here, the white parts, will be our object then. It will be a, a part of our object. This will be the uh, one slice. The, the black part will be nothing. So it will be it will be uh, yeah, nothing and the white part will be an object. So this is too small for me. So I go here to 2D 
and sometimes it, it looks here looks different than uh, if it's rendered not every time here normally it should be okay because we go to 2d but let's make an interactive render setting here so we see every time what we do and I want it bigger here go to 500 and this immediately looks looks nice yeah and now I want to animate this uh, noise so I go to the animation speed and go say to one and if I go uh, go now to uh, one frame forward so G on your keyboard is one frame forward and if I hit it you see the noise animates but we can render this out so we see it better go to here output we want all frames and here you have to be careful sometimes if it is uh, you we have here hundred frames now but we don't need hundred frames we do it for the for the tutorial we do just 50 frames we see we have 50 frames, 0 to 50, all frames, and this is 0 to 50, with 51 frames. Sometimes uh, you have here in the frame rate, we have a different frame rate as in the project settings. With Control D you come to the project settings, and here you have a frame rate 2. This must be the same like here. Then you have uh, this 45 frames, and sometimes it is uh, that you have here Let's say in the project settings 30 frames and here 25 and then it doesn't fit here so so be careful that you have in the in the project file and in the render settings the same frame rate okay we have 50 frames and let this render i save it here so, but no now i don't have to save it I save it then when i need it so this is just a test I go to physical here and instead of progressive I go to fixed and 0.5 is okay. This is very very low but we get a very fast uh, result. So control R and uh, shift R. Yes, I don't want to save. And you see it works quite fast so, so we don't have to do something. So, and we are done but here I see okay maybe that's that will be a little less for, for our object uh, so less volume but we will do this a little different then so let's try this and so with this and as slower we make this animation uh, as smoother will be the object later so, so uh, the, the, the different slices so this was for me a little too fast and what I want I want that, that this noise loops so that the end of the object is the same like the beginning so let's go to our texture in the noise here I want a little slower let's say to 0.5 and I want it to loop, a loop period of one. And now I render the same. Will be a little faster. I, I took now a, a second. I made it now with Steam Render, so you have, it's a second PC on, on it, so that everything goes faster. Okay. And now let's see what we get. We get this, and you see it loops. And this is exactly what I want. And we don't get so small objects, the small volumes. But maybe it's a little too fast still. Let's go down with the animation speed to 0.3 or even 0.2 and render it again.
And later on we will make this this path we will make a spline out of it later on so that you know what we do here. So let's see what we get. It's not really slower. But yeah, it's just 50 uh, frames. I will stay on 0.5 with the loop period of 1. That's okay. Yeah. And now I want to render out this animation we did now. So I delete here everything. What I had. So. Okay. Then I go to my render settings and I want to save it. So I save. I need a path, so I have on my desktop a noise folder, and here I say, okay, frame, good so far, save, save, that's okay, we will need all frames, that's okay, thousand by thousand is okay too, and yeah, but let's go from, in the physics, from 1.5 to 1. So we have a little sharper edges. They don't have to be totally sharp because we play later on with the, with the tolerance and so on. We don't need ambient occlusion, of course. We need nothing, we need just this black and white picture. So, okay, let's render this. it's done and now I see here I have in my explorer I have this oh I did it with TIFF don't have to be TIFF normally but doesn't matter it works with TIFF too but normally I would do it with uh, JPEG in 16-bit uh, not JPEG uh, in PNG 16-bit Yes, I render it again. I want it. I want it like I do it every time. So do it again. So delete here everything. And here I go to the outputs. I want PNG, 16-bit. So and I render it again. It works really fast, so let's see if yeah the, the, the quality is it should be enough. We will see. Oh, it's ready. So now I have my frames here with frame now with PNG. Okay, that's it for here. Now I make a new file. And first what I do, I take a vectorizer, we have another spline, a vectorizer. Now I go into my vectorizer here, and the object, and put in a texture. And this texture will be the first frame of our rendered image here. So double click it. No, I don't need any location. And you see, we get a spline out of this picture. This, this does our vectorizer. Now I can see the spline looks quite good. It looks not checky or something else. That's, that's okay. We can play now in the vectorizer with a tolerance. Let's say give it a 20 here. So it looks a little rounder. It's okay. And I don't want adaptive. I want here uniform. And I go here to null and go slowly up with the number here until I say, okay, this is okay for my spline. Four, five, uh, maybe eight was okay. No, uh, six is okay. Six is okay. Okay. And now, of course, we have a spline from the vectorizer, and of course, we can put uh, this in an extrusion. And you see, we can extrude this, and this is exactly what we want. And what we want, maybe later on we want to bend this one slice or something else. So let's make some subdivisions on the caps too. 
So now I go to my extrude, go to my caps, here from angons to quadrangles and to regular grid and we get something like this. So we have lots of subdivisions and we have no problem to, to paint this. I want fillet caps too, or fillet caps, <laughs> oops, this 3x3 three three is here okay. And we have a nice slice here. But it's a little too thick for me, so let's go here to 10. Yeah, better. And what I want now is this animated texture. You see, if I have this, let's load the next frame. This will be this 01 frame. You see, we get another thing. And if I go here to 2, we get another. And this different splines. I want to render out, so I want this spline, and then I want a own spline. So what that will do is right click and uh, current state to object. Now I would have a spline, and this I will have for every of our fifty pictures. I will for every spline what we get, so we get fifty splines then. And this we, I don't want to to, to make it like this. Then again. Load the next picture again, right? Click the, 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 the end, end, end. So let's make a easy uh, expressor script and then a, a very, very easy coffee thing. And let's more than less automate this. Automate this. So first, what I want is uh, that when I go one frame forward, so G is you go with G one frame forward, and with F you go one frame back. And I want when I go to with G one frame forward, I want that every frame I go forward and the next uh, image will be loaded. So this we can do with an expressor. For, it, for the expressor, I make just a null object here. It's just to, to put my expressor tag on it. So it's, you could uh, put the expressor tag on, on the vectorize, on the extrude, wherever we want, but do an extra null here. Okay, so we have here our expressor. What do I need? I need my vectorizer, of course. And I need from my vectorizer here, I need this slot here, this texture slot. So I track this texture on the blue edge here, the blue corner, and, and I have the texture in here. The next thing is I want the frames here. So that, that uh, each frame works with uh, yeah that we had we, we know that the on which frame we are. So right click on it, make a new node, and here we need a time node. But I don't need here the time. So double click on this point here, on this node, and I need frames here. So every frame. You will see uh, every frame with token. Is, yeah, I make here a result node. You don't need this. This is just to show you. You have a result node. And if I drag this to here, and if I go with G now next to the next frame, you see one frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, frame five. This comes out with this timer node here. Okay. Let's the result here. Maybe we need it later. Just to show it, result note that never disturbs. <laughs> so what I need now, we need a math note. This, this, I want uh, this texture tag here. So I want this texture, and here is the frame null null null. I want that, that when I go one frame forward, that that this the next picture will be loaded, so I need here the 9991. So for this I take a math node. See, this is the calculate math. And I need three I need three things, so I need another input here. First in the math node, uh, click on it so that it's activated. We have here the three inputs. But I see what I need. I don't need in the node. I don't need real. I need a string. So now I go to parameters. 
The first string will be the file name. So I go to my vectorizer here and just copy this one. Control C, go to, back to my math node and input one, Control V. I need it just without the point PNG, without the ending. And I don't need one of these null. I don't need the last, uh, last null because the add node will do this frame number. We know this is the this is frame null. Will add this to my to my frame name here. So when I put one away, we will get the last null which I need from this node here, from this time node. So good. The second one is the time node here. And the third one, the third input here is the ending. So the, the extension is point PNG. Uh, PNG. So what do we get out now of this? I, I, I show it you in the result here. And now the result has to be an, a string. Uh, where are you? Okay. This output will be string now and you see we get exactly the file name what we need we have our file name from the math node this is the file name then we have the frame number this what will be added to the to the uh, file name and with the third input we have this point png and this is now this here and this is exactly how our first frame is called. It's on the desktop noise frame frame as a desktop noise frame okay this is exactly what we want and I put this now this output to the texture of the vec of the vectorizer and if I go to the vectorizer now and I see here it's point null and if I go now we can hide this for a little bit we go with G one frame forward, you will see, Jack, you see the spline one, this is the next spline is, is added. And spline two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we get a problem because of 10. We will see nothing because we have three uh, nulls here in front. And you will see here from nine we have three nulls and by ten we have just two nulls in front so from the to frame 10 we have to go again to the math node and just delete here one null and then we co can continue we have now frame 10 g 11 12 13 14 and so on I see it in the vectorizer 15 16 and this is what I want and now I want each of them of these splines and, and own spline okay let's go to the math node here and do three nulls and go back here so this is for the first ten things so for the moment we don't need the express so I want to yeah, or I want here the vectorizer that is, has the same name like uh, like the file name. So I have laid down my splines uh, named correctly. For this, I just go with the output on the blue corner here, the basic parameters and name. You see now the name changes here too. And that's for the expressor at the moment. The next thing is I don't want so what we can do we could work now without coffee or without everything we could do it now on frame null right click current state to object hit g for the next frame right click current state to object it is but it's a lot of work or it is if it is right click and right click and right click and g and g we can do this a little faster uh, do you know meanwhile I am lazy and we will learn a little bit too so what we can do to automate it a little bit so we can write a better script to, to, to automate everything but but uh, we don't need this for 50 frames or for 100 frames maybe 
and you will I don't think you will need more than 100 slices let's go to script first of all is the script manager okay in the script manager go to file and make a new file don't need this hello world this is okay the next thing I want to see is the script, the console. It shows us uh, if we have some errors or something else, it just will show us the errors. And I want, this is the this important thing for me, the script log. The script log shows us everything, uh, the, the, the commands for everything uh, I do. So for this example, I go into my vectorizer, right click and current state to object. And immediately here in the script log, it shows me current state to object, this, this uh, sentence here. And I just copy this, control C and copy it in my script manager, control V and have it here. So I delete this line, go to my vectorizer. And normally if I hit execute now, it should do the same like with the right click with, uh, uh, with uh, you know, <laughs> execute and we get an uh, uh, error. It says too many parameters. Yeah, this is here. We have twice. I don't know why it shows this twice. We have twice this uh, one, this number and we don't need it. We need it just once. So if I hit now execute, you see, we get our spline here. That's what I want. The next thing is I want when, when it made the spline that it goes to the next frame. Nothing simpler is this. Is this. Just go to uh, hit on G on your keyboard for the next frame. And you see what it did in the script log. Go to next frame, the call command. We copy this call command and paste it here under this and that's it we don't have to do more we can close this and this i let this open for the moment what it does now is when i hit execute it makes my spline and goes to the next frame make spline next frame you see so fast we can do this now delete this for the moment and go back to the first frame and now I do it just uh, from the frame null to nine and then you know we have to delete one null in the express attack for the 10 until 50. So I hit just one okay this, this doesn't work now because I haven't selected the vectorizer now now it works Okay, execute. We have frame now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, eight, nine. We are no nine now. Nine. So you see, we have here here this line eight. So once more, one more is execute. Nine is okay. And now we have to go to the express again, and just in the math node, delete one null. And we can close the expressor too. Hit execute now. You have see now we have frame 10, the spline number 10, and execute it until we have spline number 50. So we can do this. You see, we don't have to automate this. This, this is fast enough, I think. So, and we have spline number 50, and we are done. We can delete this script if we want. Just delete it. Okay, and close it. And that's all with, with scripting and express, so we don't need it anymore. So what do we now? I take these new splines. You can make, you can uh, select it, select all the splines and uh, put it in a null object, so Alt G. Now we have all splines in this null object. And now I want to distribute these splines along the x axis, uh, the z axis here. How can we do this? Nothing easier than that. <laughs> Again, 
You press with the middle mouse button on your null object, so you select every children and control left click on the on the null object itself to deselect it. Now we have selected all splines. I go now in the attribute manager of the splines, coordinate and in set direction we want to distribute it. Here I give in num times and now the space what I want between the displines. So 25 centimeter and I want to go in the minus direction. So minus 25 and hit enter. And you see, we have every 25 centimeter, we have now one spline. This is exactly what we want. Next thing is, we put out this vectorizer here and we don't need it. For now, maybe we want to make it later. As I said, we can do it with every noise and then just render out the noise and put it in the same. You can save your expressor in the, in the small script and you have very fast the same thing with, with another shape here. So they execute, uh, they extrude. <laughs> I put, I take just one uh, uh, spline for the moment and put it under the ex extrude because uh, if I put everything under the extrude it needs longer to, to calculate. So we first I just put this frame 50 here inside and hide the other frames for the moment. I just want to see uh, with the, the extrusion what, what I need for the extrusion. First I know uh, 10 centimeter. Yeah this is this is from from before so it should work it should be exactly what I need. Yeah, and it is exactly what I need. So don't have to be more. So I can throw this back here and put the null under the extrusion. We are now, we have the null under the extrude. We see nothing. We don't see the extrusion. We need the, the extrude. We need to activate hierarchically. And now we have this here. And this <laughs> looks, I like it, I love it. Okay. This is great. Yeah, let's do it in this direction, why not? I see it later, we can do it later. So, what I want now is, I want uh, to wrap this around a spline, let's say. At uh, they, let's try it first with a circle spline. Because we are looped our animation, so we have this the same, we have here the same uh, shape like here. So on a, on a circle it would fit here. So let's make a circle. And the circle has to be on set. Is too small, let's see, 700. Uh, okay. And we need a spline wrapper here. Good. So I want to uh, the, the extrude to be wrapped around the spline here. S but I can't normally if to do use a deformer, you just put the deformer under your object and uh, as child, and it works. But here we can't put it under the object. So we put the extrude in a null, so Alt G, and now we just do the spline wrapper under this null. And now everything what is in this null will be affected from the spline wrapper here. At the moment we see nothing here, because the spline wrapper does not know what uh, spline, so we drag the circle in here, in the spline wrapper. That needs a little bit because it is, there's just something to calculate and I see, okay, this is in the wrong direction. <laughs> it looks great, but it's not what I want. So, and, and it's, it works uh, quite slow. You see, if I deactivate it, it works quite slow. Here is a small trick. If you put the extrude here in a connect object, go and alt click on it. So first select extrude and alt click on the connect object and then again 
you see it works much faster in the connect object. Okay, now go to the spline wrap and we need here plus zeta plus x plus x. Well, we are, we've been on plus x and then plus z. Yeah, plus z. Okay, this is this now. And everything is smooth because we have enough uh, subdivisions. But I don't like it really on the, on the spline. This would be uh, nicer if we have more uh, slices, always so 100 slices, it would look much better. But I don't want it in the circle, but you see everything fits here. So because of the loop of the noise, everything fits here. Let's make another spline. I don't need a circle. Let's go to the top view. And and I want uh, such a, a sinus spline here. So for this, I make a helix. The helix makes to x y, I think. Yes. In the height, I make it like this slices, so something like this. And the radius about fifty should be okay. Okay. But I don't want the sinus in this direction, I want it flat. So I go to my helix, we don't need as many subdivisions, 50 is more than enough here. And hit C to convert it. Then I go to point mode and drag the angle selection and select all the points. And here in the size Y, I go to null. And now I have a flat sinus spline okay. and maybe we should we should uh, save this one <laughs> save it as I don't know <laughs> spine looks like a spine okay good so far now I go to my spline wrapper and put the helix spline in this. Okay, so far, but we see it uh, does uh, it does not overlap. It can't overlap, but it's too small here. So let's make the helix spline here. Go this now for T and. Okay, first I want the helix spline and I center the axis, so I'm in the middle of this of the spline. I do it with magic center, but uh, as I told to tell you in the in every uh, video of mine, you can do it with uh, here with mesh axis center and set everything to null and execute. And you will find everything here. You will find every script I use every. Plugin I use, you will find in the description of the video. I can't say it often enough because uh, every time there come questions, where can I find this? Uh, guys, please just read the description. And in every, not, not just in my videos. If a video, if you find a video or a tutorial, lead, uh, read the descriptions. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the guy who made the video uh, does not, it's not just for fun uh, make, makes a, a description. So please read the, the, <laughs> the descriptions. It's like we read the fucking manual. <laughs> okay, so make the spline bigger a little bit and long and rounder. So now we have nice thing here. Don't want to see the spline wrapper. So. Okay, N A to see our objects and we have a really nice look at this we have a great result here so you can make a lot with this maybe you want to make this a rigid body we can let f make it, uh, let it fall and and let uh, yeah we have own each uh, Object, a single object, and everything. Let's try this. So, 
what I do now is uh, I if I want to do normally if you don't want to do anything else so if you don't want to make it dynamic so uh, you can stay like this you don't have to uh, change anything you can work uh, with this but I just show you a quick thing how to make this dynamic so first what I need I need uh, this connect object and I copy it I hide this and deactivated it for a moment because we don't need it here and this connect object now I just hit C on the keyboard to, to convert it now we get lots of, of uh, selection tags but select the first selection tag, select the last selection tag and delete it so yeah, with the first and last, then you have to hold the shift key. So select the first selection deck, hold the shift key and select the last selection deck, then delete it. <laughs> okay, and now I can copy out this spline wrapper, deactivate it here. And now I can put it under my connect object. And here I want to make right click current state to object and delete this. So I have this without the spline wrapper and without everything. I can make it uh, with the spline wrapper dynamic because then the, uh, the single parts would be affected to this uh, on the, with the spline wrapper and that's not what I want. So let's make a um, disk here. Just e, uh, make it bigger. So, and the disk will get a rigid body tag and collider tag. So, go to simulation, collider body. And here on the on our connect object, let's make here the, the center the axis too. And we set PSR so the, that we are on the null point. We don't need the helix here for the moment. I don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, reset PSR. If you don't have it in the toolbar, you will find under character commands and here reset PSR. That sets everything to now uh, on the axis. Okay, on our connect object, we need, if we let it fall now, uh, it would fall as one object. So if I go right click and simulation tag, uh, come on, simulation and rigid body. If I let it fall now, it just falls down. And let's make the 500 frames here so that we have more fun with it. It's just one object. But I want each single object and I want these parts here. They are not connected with I want them single too. So we can do this with select connect and go to mo graph and we take the fracture object here give the rigid body tag to the fracture object in the fracture object we say not straight we want explode segments and connect then in the rigid body tag i want to see the dynamics immediately that's okay and the collision the inherit deck apply to children because the fracture object apply to children so we want to apply it on the connect and here we need just the top level so this is top level here and if we let for it now we get this you see we have all the single objects here let's make this a little does, yeah, I saw it. The, the disk uh, is in the, the, the. That's the reason it, it springs. <laughs> so now it works. And I go to the uh, collider deck and to the rich body deck and set up the friction to about 150. That's okay. And again, whoops. And you see. It works perfect but this is not what I want now so 
I want to work with the don't need the friction thing, I don't need the disk here. I want to work with our connect object here. So let's yeah, let's render this thing. I'll save it again. So let's find of course I will render this this whole thing with my rig of course, but first let's make an an wood texture here. So double click in the texture manager, double click on the texture. Go to my color and texture the surface and wood. And that should be all we need. So for at least for the wood, we need the reflectance too, of course. So I drag this on my, uh -huh. I could drag it on, on the connect object too, but I drag it on the extrude. Or I'll take it on the connect object. Let's see how it works. Let's see what we get. Oh, we might have to go to low delete dock down here. To low, that's okay. Yeah, it looks looks okay for me. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, maybe I do this whole thing a little longer. I'll take my helix plane. R, uh, not R, T for scale. We are still uh, parametric, so we can work a little on it. So, okay, good. But this, of course, looks boring. We need a shiny material, a little shiny, and we need we need more. So what I do now is I make here the reflectance channel active, then go to the Fresnel and for wood I take normally the dielectric and vegetable, vegetable here, here down, here about 20 and that's it. Don't need more for this. But it still doesn't look quite interesting here. So I take, as I said, I will use my Nicomedia Scene Rig Pro, so just click on my script here and I have my rig inside. What I need now is, yeah, I want to, but I can't, I don't think that I can, uh, no, that doesn't work as I want it. It's a little bit. I will make this one object, so I copy it again, like I did it before, connect object, hit C, select the first tag, shift, click on the last, and delete it, and put the spline under here, I do this because I want here the axis in the middle and I want to have this everything exactly in the in the center of the scene so this this is the reason I do this but I don't delete my, my thing here maybe I want it later but I don't think so but no chance okay now I know I'm to hire with my with my floor here so I go to my rig whoops and go down with my floor under the floor, do, 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 move down here, somewhere like this, okay. Then I need the floor, of course, bigger. I need it bigger than the than the object is, of course. So let's say something like this. Should be okay. And here I use my camera. Uh, you can do it, of course, with, uh, with a, no a normal camera to camera too, uh, but I use my camera I have it here. So I activate my camera. <laughs> this is a nice view. To, uh, so go out here. So. Oops. I'm pitching uh, something like that. Much. Oh, 
find a nice angle. Something like that, maybe. Um, yeah, something like that, I think, should work. little down yeah that should work okay and now let's see what we get nice shiny things and everything is like i wanted but no it's not like i wanted because now we have, can use gi and we get a much better result you see now it is like i wanted <laughs> Good so far. What do I want for now? Oh, but I see it does not render the same thing like uh, like I have here. So that uh, this view looks other than the render. The position looks different. And I had this before. And what I do here is I just had to to uh, restart my cinema for the, the program don't know why this happens sometimes uh, but it doesn't matter so so I, I i'm back in a second and just restart cinema for this for this we saved <laughs> so i am back and i found the reason why this was it was because of the spline wrap here the, the, the spline wrap i, I just dra dragged it out then uh, reset PSR, I did reset PSR on the spline wrap and then put it back and now it works. I hope, let's see if it works. Yes, now it works. Okay, now we are, now we are talking. Okay. So, and if you have the same problem, as I said, just take out the spline wrapper, uh, make a, a reset PSR and drag it back. So, but I'm not totally happy with, uh, with the camera angle here. And now it's okay for me. Okay. Save it. And now we have this here. Uh, but that's not what I like. I, I like a dark uh, floor. This is the first thing I want. So I go back to my rig. Background and floor. And just with the brightness go down with the brightness. And about 15 should be okay. Okay, that looks much better. Now I want a shiny floor. So go up with the reflection strength to 100%. Okay, and I want it blurry to about 20%. Okay, and I want a little more uh, reflection, so I go down with the free nail and a little bit. Yes, now I see more. And here now, I have we have another po uh, possibility here. Where I have to, in my rig HDR reflection on. That means now at this moment it's off, and it means that this uh, HDR here will not be reflected in the floor. And the, the most of the time, I don't want it to be reflected. Believe me. But now I want to try it with reflection on the floor. And you see, we get this nice shiny floor. What in this case looks much better. Let's try, let's see if we can get a better HDRI uh, reflections. So I go to my preview here, make the preview bigger. Here down is the preview. Uh, it's something is here not in this not in center but doesn't matter 
so uh, I want to rotate it to make Yeah, that's nice, but now I have this shiny. Let's try another HDRIs. So I have here my layout for HDRI testing. And let's test some uh, from the SIBL loader. They are free and the, the link you will find in the description. So I go to my thing. Oh, why is the SIBL loader? Oh, it's here presets and here I want to view the tree view okay so I can better scroll through and I know uh, at, at every time the SIBL in the Sybil loader the first things I, I try are the fun cleaves they are my <laughs> My, my uh, favorites. So I drag the fun cleave in here. Yeah, this is immediately, I like it. Um, but it's a little too dark. Okay, we can go up with the, with the reflection brightness here. And what I want, maybe I want a little uh, go down to the null again, a little fill light so that I have more light inside here. So I turn on my fill light. That's of course much too bright, about 30. And now you see we have inside the light and it, it, it looks very nice. Twenty-five, but I want to try another HDRI. How does this look? Yeah, this I think is what I want. Let's rotate it a little bit to see how this looks. Then, HDRI then every preview is on. And let's read it. Uh, I think this is nice. Yes, I like this one. But first I try the other <laughs> funk leaves too. It's too golden. No. It's too bright. Of course I could could play now with the rotation again. Rotate it and it's nice but I think it was full rotation and this one was what I liked. Yes. Okay. Back to my HDRI tutorial layout. So the next thing what I want is I want a little depth of field. So I turn off my preview here because this just a minute. So okay. And the depth of field we can use with the camera of course here in my rig. You can use this with a normal camera too. Just uh, go to the f-stop and give it the, the f-stop of a normal camera. Give the same f-stop like I use then here. So 
but I want a focus object and I want to focus like somewhere like here on these small parts here. So for this, I take a null, I go in top view. Yes, and this, our, our connect thing isn't in the, isn't in the center. But I, I don't want to do you, but why not? Here is everything in the center, and here is everything in the center. And if it's, uh, the helix is not, or maybe not, in, it's the same too. It uh, doesn't matter, it's okay. It's, now we have the camera set and everything is fine. So I set a focus for my for my depth of field. For this I make a null object. E, and I know somewhere like here maybe. Yeah, it's set somewhere like here on this small part. Name it focus so that I don't know what is this. Go to my rig and just drag the focus null in the focus object here. And now I need a very small number I think. So let's start with 0.1. And we will see nothing happens. Of course. Why? Because we have to go to the render settings and here in the physical center we have to activate the depth of field. And then we immediately see we have depth of field. And the focus is on our null. And that's too much. Let's see, 0.3. The smaller the number, the more depth of field you get. Yeah, two is a good one, I think. Yeah, and it looks nice. So let's make a better render out of this. Let's go to the middle. GI, okay. Don't forget to activate the depth of field. Here is everything okay. Uh, yeah, if you don't have the render settings, and uh, you can uh, edit here, you see, this, uh, inside render settings, when you have the, the Nicomedia scene rig with the scripts. But you will get this project file, of course, and then you have every setting and everything has a, should be no problem. So let's render this here. Okay, that says uh, it wants the frame, blah, 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 so from our noise, but don't need it. And let's see what we get here. Yeah, as I said, I, I added one machine to the, to the tutorial now. So we can render a little faster. And I think we get a really nice Great result. Looks better than my original one. <laughs> because in my original one, I, I used an, a faster animation speed and I had more uh, steps, uh, bigger steps between. So it does not look so, so nice. Here it looks much smoother. This, 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 I like this part and this part here, this looks nice. And here inside, uh, to, to make a render inside. Yeah, we get this and it looks very nice, I think. Huh? Yay. Okay, I pause the video and make an even better render. And then let's see what we can do in Photoshop. But in Photoshop, you know what I do. I just make it uh, uh, up the clarity and, and uh, throw it in the Nick filters and that's it. So, but it doesn't matter, we will do it. So, uh, pause it here and try to make a better render. Okay, now we have here our result. And you see it needs seven and a half minutes. Um, and yeah, 
Uh, the depth of field needs a lot of time to render, but it's, it's worse, so the result is worse than the, the waiting. So let's go to Photoshop. I copy this one, copy here, and go to Photoshop, File, New, and share from clipboard, and I want it 16-bit. Uh, Create, and Control v paste it in. Then J, I just want my backup folder here. Control J to copy the layer. Then make a smart object out of it. So I may have a shortcut here, but you can right click and convert a smart object. And then Control Shift A to go in the camera raw filter. Not 100% here. And up the clarity. And we have a so nice render, you don't even. No, it looks it looks better with the clarity up. Okay. Let's see the difference. Yeah, this is better, no question. And now I again convert this to a smart object and go to my Nick filters. Color FX Pro. Oh, where are you? Oh, the, it was the hard drive was was sleeping, I think. So I have here my favorite filters. You have here all filters. I know it is, I still haven't changed it to English, but you see the filter are all English. And if you download this, the download link is in the description. You can, if you download it, you can uh, choose between a German or an English version. So I go to my favorites, and here I have dark and light and center. You see this I use every time. So. I use it here too. Okay, then add, hinzufügen means add. So you learn German a little bit too. <laughs> but hinzufügen isn't a simple word, I think. So contrast color range will be too much. Yeah, don't need it. Contrast only. No, I don't need it here. No. Dark light center. I have the detail extractor is interesting, you see? It made brings out a lot of details, but you have to be careful, you see the noise here, it brings out too, so, but it wouldn't be a problem, but it's too much, 10% uh, should, should be okay if, if I want one, yeah, this is, no, I don't need the detail extractor, I think. That's too much, it makes it... don't know. Maybe a little bit, 5%. <laughs> okay. Then add. I don't need it, don't need it. The greater the density, it is normally I like. So let's see how it works here. Yeah, but not the upper brightness, not so much, minus 10. Yeah, that's okay. Then it with the pro contrast I play normally. This is, nope, contrast, correct contrast. Okay, dynamic contrast. No. Okay, and last, last but not least, I will take an image board around it. So, yes. But maybe not an image board, I'll do it a little later because I want to get rid of this noise first. So, I delete this and okay. Then. I again uh, make a, a smart object out of it. Go again to my Control Shift A to my camera raw filter and try to get rid of the noise here. So I go to my luminance noise reduction and go up here. You see, we lose the noise. 
But of course we lose some details in, the, in our picture, but here not so much because we don't have a lot yet, let's see. It doesn't matter here. Mm, doesn't matter, okay. <laughs> okay, we are... But if you would lose some details in your uh, in your picture here, you can make it uh, quite easy. You, you go to the smart filter, to the layer mask here, and with the black, with the black uh, brush, you can paint on on it. And where you don't want this uh, this, this uh, noise reduction, you just paint over it, and you see it get black. Uh, like if I paint here, you see, I get a noise back. But here, if it works with the whole picture, so I go to it, and with in this case with Control Delete, I get everything white. And now again, make a smart object out of it. Go to my filter, new collection, and I just add a border. Oops, so go to the image border and OK. And that's it. We have our picture. Save it as fine. And we have our picture. That's it. And why did I do this with, with the uh, uh, smart object, smart object, smart object? Uh, if I double click the smart object, another picture opens, again another picture opens, another picture opens and I can do this until to my first picture here. And if I want, another, I have a, let's say I, I rendered the same thing with another, another shape, with a circle or something else. I just have to put, uh, over this picture I put the new picture and then close it and say every time yes save 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 and then uh, you have this same picture the same effects the same everything just with your other picture so you don't have to go again in, in every uh, plugin and every filter and, and to do it new i hope you like let's say show, show you what i mean I just with just put a rectangle on this here the rectangle on it and I have a black rectangle now it is let's see so this this has nothing to do it's just for, for to see what it is I close it now yes I want to save it so I have to next to the next picture yes I want to save it then we go we have to go to think it works then we have to go to the next picture close it this is the old fit the, the whole filters we used and then to the last one here close it yes and now on the result on the final picture we have now everything we needed just with this rectangle but we don't know want to Oop. Okay, that's it. I hope you liked this this video, this tutorial, and I hope you had as much fun as I had. And please show me your results. Post it here in the, in the comments or on my Facebook site or somewhere. Let let me see what you do with it. I'm interested because you have so many possibilities. In uh, imagine every other noise you need, you can you can change the seed in the noise, and you have a totally different uh, object. You can change the, the shape of, uh, don't use a plane, use a, use a disk, a, a hexagon, a, a whatever. And and you have so, so many possibilities. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so I, I hope, I'm, I think I can do another tutorial tomorrow. And yeah, and... Yep, okay, I don't have to say nothing more. Yeah, you find everything in the description. You will find there a, a donation link as well if you want to donate. And you find the link to the Nico Media Scene League Pro where you can buy it. It's still only 10 euro and every update is free. Yeah, to the Nico Media Scene League one word. 
uh, if you use the softbox at the moment, uh, you will get an error message if you don't have Octan installed. Uh, but I just hit OK and it's, it, and it's it, I just forgot to, to delete the Octan settings in the render settings as I saved it. And uh, in the next update, this will be away, this, this, this error. Okay, so bye bye. Have a nice day, have a nice weekend, and uh, yeah, do whatever you like to do. Have a nice weekend, and tschüss und baba.